Art Part B of Module Four: Explanations for Quiz Two Questions. I want to use five videos. Each video, two questions, to go through all the quiz two questions. Yeah, because、uh, some of you are、uh, really want to study、uh, why some of the questions take. These answers, you know, all the、uh, reasons behind those answers. If you just look at the answers, I show you. Sometimes you may not understand why. Yeah. All right.、Uh, part B point one. The first two questions. Question number one and then number two. The first question,、uh, I remember,、uh, I gave you a lot of explanation at that time. Yeah, here、uh, I may like to add a little more background information. Yeah,、uh, given a computing problem, if we can use brute force method, yeah, here we try to understand this brute force method a little better. To get the best solution, another important term we need to consider: best solution. Best solution here means optimal solution, right? Otherwise, how can you say one solution is the best, right? So usually we can also mean it. It is optional. Oh,、uh, not optional. Optimal, right? Opti. More, yeah. All right, the best solution. Then we should not treat this problem as a hard problem. Yeah, this hard problem. Yeah, because、uh, many people feel subjective. Yes, it's true, subjective. Yeah, but but even under the Subjective context, okay. Context, yeah.、Uh, some questions we can still we can say it is easy. It is not hard, right? Yeah. Here we have that situation. Yeah. All right. So here, because yeah. First, let me、uh, let me pick the answer. True. Yeah. We should not treat. This problem is hard problem. Brute force method can give us the optimal solution. How can we say this is a hard problem? Yeah. Now let me, you know, try to use another slightly different view to explain it. All right. Here, our first assumption: we only consider this question within computing. Community, computing community. That's quite reasonable, right? Computing community. Yeah, all of us will be there, right? Yeah, so, you know, after you graduate, after you finish this course, you know, sooner or later, you will be in this community. All right. Here, let us make this assumption. Everybody in the commu computing community knows the brute force method. Everybody knows that, right? Yeah. Why? Because that is the simplest method for the brute force method. Basically,、uh, no special technique. No special technique needed to find the solution. If you use some a little special technique, you cannot treat it as brute force, right? Yeah, because you know you use some special technique that that kind of thing make your algorithm special. Okay, another thing the brute force method should go through 
exhaust all the inputs. Yeah, exhaust. That's another, you know, exhaust all the possibilities. Yeah, that's another property of it. Yeah, because if you do not exhaust all, all the input cases, that means you skip some of the input cases. How can you skip some of the input cases? You have to use some special technique to skip. Yeah, otherwise, you have no reason to skip, right? Yeah. So from that point of view, you do something special. All right. So now let us see. Yeah. We assume everyone in the computing community knows the brute force method and that and can use brute force method to solve a problem right everyone yeah then for this particular problem yeah here given so this one yeah everybody knows the brute force method and use that he or she can find the best solution right then yeah, we can say almost everybody. Yeah, let me just, uh, you know, uh, even if it's not 100%, right? We can say almost all, all of the members in this community can solve the given problem and get the best solution using the brute force method. How can you say it is a hard problem? right how can you say it is a hard problem right yeah so this uh we understand from you know try to from something uh common yeah all right yeah uh so that's the first question yeah second question yeah this one we compare uh selection sort bubble sort yeah i assume you know the details. You know how to do selection sort, how to do bubble sort. All right. Uh, we want to compare the efficiency between the selection sort and the bubble sort given an array without any inversion. Yeah, this is the main condition. I hope you do not skip this condition. Do not skip this condition. No, uh, without any inversion, no inversion, right? Yeah. So, no inversion in the given array, in the input given array. Yeah. I hope you you know the meaning of the inversion, right? Yeah. Suppose uh, we consider two elements in an array. Yeah. A of I element. A of J element. Yeah. We assume the array index for these two elements, I less than J. Yeah. So if we look at the index order, yeah, we see A of I first, then A of J second. But if we look their values, the value order just the opposite. Yeah. The value order, oh, sorry. Yeah. The value order will be A of I greater than A of J. Yeah. That is the inversion meaning. Okay. Inversion mean, meaning or definition. All right. Yeah. All right. So here, the assumption tells us there is no inversion. Okay, that means this array is ordered. Yeah. The given uh, uh, this array is ordered. Okay, yeah, no inversion. It's ordered. All right. Second, we need to. Look at this, essentially the same, yeah. Because sometimes two methods, you cannot say they have exact the same efficiency, right? 
how can two different algorithms have the same, exact the same efficiency, right? Yeah, almost impossible. So, but it is a little more safe to say essentially the same. There is a difference, but that difference is very small. You can ignore that, dif that difference. Then we can say essentially the same. We can ignore so so little. Yeah, yeah. So here we look at that situation. First, the answer is the third one. Let me explain why. Yeah. The main difference between yeah, here when we consider selection sort and a bubble sort. The main difference we want to look at, okay, yeah, main difference we want to look at, swap operation. How many swap operations do we need to do? All right, yeah. The swap operation when we need to apply swap operation right yeah here for the bubble sort yeah for the bubble sort when there is one inversion then there is a swap operation one inversion corresponds to one swap operation whenever there is a an inversion, there is a swap operation. All right, so that's the bubble sort. All right, yeah. All right. Now, the assumption tells us no inversion. That means this bubble sort, there is no swap, right? Operation for bubble sort. Then, how about selection? Selection. Each scan, we try to get a minimum. So we, we use an initial minimum value, then we compare with each one. If we get a smaller value, if we get a smaller value, we put in a temporary variable location, right? Yeah, we hold it in a temporary location until we finish the scan so then we replace, we put the minimum value to the first element in the current array. You know, something like that, okay? Smallest or the largest, there are two versions, but these two versions are equivalent. We just consider one of the two versions. Here you can see if the array is sorted then when we do comparison we never need to we never need to do the last copy right yeah we never need to do the last copy because the first element is always the smallest the last element is always the largest okay yeah so here you can see these two methods basically they only do the comparisons. They only do the comparisons. They do not do swap operation. If no swap operation, these two methods have almost same efficiency. But we cannot say exact the same, so we can say essentially the same. So that is very safe way to describe their efficiencies. Yeah. All right, so that's the first video, B.1. Yeah.